again everybody this is more on graphing parabolas using uh, a directrix and a focus and uh, and interpreting the, the equation of a parabola in standard form okay so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this example right here and what I want you to notice immediately is that uh, X is the thing that is being squared and so in that case we say that this parabola is either going to open up or down and you might already see that you know studying parabolas in the past that this this leading coefficient here is positive so that this this guy is going to open up but uh, Here's the thing about it. We've been discussing how to graph things in standard form. And since x is being squared in this instance, we're going to uh, consider the standard form in this manner, where we say x minus h quantity squared is on the left. On the right, we have 4p as the coefficient of y minus k, which is our linear factor over here. Um, now, now keeping this in mind, this is nice because the, the things that it tells us about here, we say is the vertex would be at hk, and we say 4p, where p is this directed distance from, from the vertex to the focus of the problem. These things are really nice when graphing this, but uh, you're going to notice that sometimes we get equations that are not necessarily already in standard form. So we need a method in order to put them in standard form, and that method is one that we've used in the past, but that is to complete the square. So um, let's go ahead and start by doing some manipulation here. First things first, you're going to notice that I have this quantity 1 fourth out front here. This is just kind of a hindrance, but it would be nice to clear this out of the way. So what we could do is we could necessarily multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this, which would necessarily just completely wipe it off to the right side here, and we'd have 4y. So um, I'm going to do something here, and hopefully it doesn't bother you too much. I'm going to use the reflexive property of equality, and I'm going to take this squared quantity on the right here, and I'm going to station it on the left, and I'm going to put our linear quantity on the right. And the reason why is because if what we're trying to do is obtain this in standard form, uh, then we do want the squared quantity on the left for, for once, okay? Uh, now, in order to get this in an x minus h squared form, or, or you might notice this is a perfect square binomial, or it would multiply out to be a perfect square trinomial, um, that, uh, that we want this to be a binomial squared. So in order to do this, we need to complete the square, which, as you might recall in the past, uh, regarded, uh, regarding this, would necessarily imply that we need to kick this loose term to the other side first. Okay, So our first step here is going to be this. We're going to subtract this constant from both sides. Um, constant from both sides. So that wipes it from this side. And now we have this, excuse me, <clears throat> x squared minus 2x, pardon me, 2x, uh, and I'm going to put plus blank, okay, is equal to now on the right 4y minus 5, uh, actually plus the same blank. What we're going to do is we're going to add some constant to both sides here, such that this constant would allow us to factor the left into a, uh, or make it a perfect square trinomial, but would allow us to factor the left into a binomial times itself, or the binomial squared. Um, so, so here's what we need. We need half of this middle term, which would in this case be negative 1, and we need to square that. So negative 1 squared would be 1. We're going to add this to the left. So now you see the reason why we put this blank on the right. If we add this to the left, we also want to add this to the right. Okay. Now that we have this, what this allows us to do on the left is actually to factor this into x uh, plus or minus a quantity squared, which will be a perfect square trinomial here. It is. But uh, bi uh, binomial squared, we always know what to put in here with our x because it was half of this middle term that we had squared to get this, this last constant. So we say half of negative 2 is negative 1. Of course, we could always check this by foiling this back out and seeing that we get the stuff on the left here. But this is now equal to 4y. Um, and if we combine like terms here, negative 5 and a positive 1, we have minus 4. So we are almost nearly here to, to uh, standard form. You're going to notice, though, that uh, we have this quantity y minus k in which there's nothing accompanying this y, or at least there's a 1 here. So we do want to have a 1 in front of this y, so what we're going to do is we're going to factor out this, this whatever this coefficient of y is right here, we're going to factor it out front. And it's actually convenient here because uh, these both share a common factor on the right. So now this yields x minus 1 squared is equal to 4 out front times the quantity y minus 1. And the nice thing about this now is just through the process of completing the square, we find that now we've got uh, this in vertex form where we've got h and k, and we have 4p is this quantity right here. So let's go, start, go ahead and start deducing things here. For this parabola, our vertex is at uh, an h value of 1 and a k value of 1. And uh, we know that 4p, 4p is equal to this coefficient of the linear quantity, so 4p is equal to 4, which is nice because uh, this would imply that p is equal to 1. And also to point out that since p is 1, it's positive, 
Uh, this means that we have a parabola that was either going to open up or down, and since p was positive, our focus lies one unit above this vertex of 1, 1. We're going to go ahead and start graphing this now. We have our axes, uh, just wonderfully drawn if I do say so myself. Not really. But uh, we'll go ahead and draw out our vertex here. So we say 1, 1 is our vertex. I do want to go ahead and label this. We say, okay, so 1, 1. Our focus lies one unit above this since it opens up. Uh, so we say our focus now is at the point 1, 2. And since the vertex is the midpoint of the focus and the directrix, we know that the directrix actually will switch over to, uh, why not? Well, not, we don't want to fill. We want to just switch over to red. We'll switch over to red here. And, and this, this focus here, the, the vertex is the midpoint between it and the directrix. So the directrix here is this line, um, y equals this constant 0. And now we can sketch in the rest of this parabola. So the important thing to note here is this. Sometimes when we're given uh, the equation not in standard form or vertex form, we need to convert it into vertex form. Excuse me. But this is always going to occur by completing the square. And also, keeping in mind, it's really convenient to put the squared quantity on the left of the equation.